Hey y'all, I missed y'all so much. Okay, I am not sure what's true or false in this video. I am just here to take the gossip and scandal from online, from yesteryear, from books, from magazines, from word of mouth, from wherever I can get it, and I ball all of that up together and I tell you guys a story. Let's get to it. What's up, Scandalites and Says So Squad? This is Ashley with Ashley Says So, and I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video. And before we get started, I want to give a few member shout out. We have Katie D, Natasha Fool, Kay Lacey, Janet Williams, Brandy S, Laquita Burke, Donna Jackson, Yolanda Whirl, CJ Jarvis 88, and Tammy Frazier. Thank you guys so much for becoming members for Ashley Says So. And if you are a member and your name was not called, do not worry, do not fret. I will continue to call out names the further that I go. Now, let me go ahead and say this because I had to say it on the Tina video and I got to say it here. I ain't scared of you mother suckers. Come on. And I say this because I know a lot of you guys are big fans of the person that we are doing the video on today. And that person is Mr. Luther Vandross. Let's get to it. Luther Ranzani Vandross Jr. was born on April the 20th, 1951 in Manhattan, New York City. His mother was a nurse named Mary Ida Vandross and his father, Luther Vandross Sr., did upholstery and he was a singer. Now, Luther was raised in Manhattan's Lower East Side in public housing. And although his family didn't have a lot of money, some gossip says that they were very close-knit and very loving and that his mother and father actually liked to sing and dance and go out and celebrate and things like that. So it seems like he had a pretty happy childhood. And because his parents liked to go out dancing and they liked music and his his father was a singer. Luther himself became like a little musician very, very early on. It's said that at the age of three, he taught himself how to play the piano. Now, although it seems that the family was generally happy and there were a lot of good times, unfortunately, there were also some sad times. Luther's father died when Luther was only eight years old and the cause of death was reported to be diabetes. After his father's death, the family packed up and they moved to the Bronx. And it's here that two of his sisters, Patricia and Anne, started taking little Luther to the Apollo Theater. And this left a lasting effect on little Luther. He loved to go to the theater, especially when he got to see people like Aretha Franklin, The Supremes, maybe even Gladys Knight and the Pips. Basically what I'm trying to get across is that he loved seeing these people sing on stage, but his favorite, the one who blew everybody out the water in Luther's mind, honey, was Dion Warwick. It is said that Luther was amazed by Dion's performance, by her singing, and you guys know what her singing is like. I mean, the way she sings really does blow you away because she does it effortlessly. So Luther was like, this is an angel singing before me, and some gossip even says that he cried tears of joy when he heard Dion Warwick singing. All I know is that it is said that when Luther saw Dion Warwick, he knew right then and there that he wanted to sing. Now there is another singer that he saw and became a huge fan of and that is Miss Patti LaBelle. Baby they say when Luther heard Miss Patti LaBelle hitting those high notes, child he tried everything he could to mimic that. He just loved her voice. Loved her voice so much that he actually started a fan club. And Luther didn't start this fan club alone honey. Gossip says that his homeboys was in the fan club too but of course Luther was the president. Don't get it twisted. Now Gossip also says that by the time Luther formed this fan club, he was already in high school. And that high school was called William Howard Taft High School. And so with the information that we already have, it is clear that Luther loves music. He wants to sing and he wants to form his own group. And he either formed or joined a group called Shades of Jade. And as soon as Luther did join this group, he was serious. He felt like his group could out sing any other group. So soon him and his group started started doing amateur night at the Apollo. And if I'm not mistaken, it was also while he was with Shades of Jade that he sang on Sesame Street. And child, you can tell in the clip when he was singing that Luther was going to have a beautiful voice. I mean, it was not developed all the way yet, but you could just tell even when he was younger, his voice was going to be beautiful. But honey, listen at this. Why come Luther on the clip walking up the steps talking about, we're only halfway. But when we, like what, sir, are you happy or mad? Because I can't tell. Luther needed to get his facial expressions together to sit up there trying to be on a kid's show. I'm going to put the link in the description. Go click on it and see how fast Luther face change up from surprise to Luther. But outside of me joking and playing about Luther's facial expressions, he said that he really did enjoy his time on Sesame Street. I do not think they got paid a whole lot. 
All he knew is that somebody came to him and was like, hey, we want y'all to sing on TV. And Luther and his crew was like, hey, cool, we are there. Now, they probably didn't know that several years later, people was going to be in the comments on YouTube talking about they was the Sesame Street Church of God in Christ. Uh, people just mess it, child. Now, I think the dates of Luther being on Sesame Street was like 1969 to 1970. And also, I believe it is said that he graduated in 1969. So, after he left Sesame Street, I do know that he attended college for a short while. And that was at Western Michigan University. But he dropped out after only a year, I believe, because he wanted to pursue his musical career. Some of the first work that he did was with Dunny Hathaway and Roberta Flack. It is said that he added backing vocals for them but it's also said that Roberta Flack fired his behind but they said she did it for a good reason it is said that she looked at Luther with tears in her eyes and was like listen baby you cannot spend your career singing behind me you just can't you have a wonderful voice you remind me of a young Dunny Hathaway and you really need to spread your wings and have your own career after that he worked with several other big time artists including David Bowie, Shaka Khan, Diana Ross, Barbara Streisand, child some of everybody. The key kid was hot stuff, honey. He could play the piano, he could sing, and he also had a way of like, like knowing what needs to be in a song. Like I said, he made a song with David Bowie, and in that particular song, he told David Bowie, like, you need to add this line of lyrics. Like, I'm not talking about just like a woo or why, no. I'm talking about a whole line of lyrics that Luther was like, hey, you need to add this to the song for your background vocals. I'm just telling you that's what you need to do. And so David Bowie was like, okay, test it out, and when Luther did, and he heard what Luther was talking about. He's like, hey, I love it. We're going to keep it. So Luther had a way of, he just knew music. You know what I'm saying? He just knew what would work and what wouldn't work. In fact, he knew music so well that TV networks started hiring him to write commercial jingles. And not only TV networks, like food execs, like Burger King and Kentucky Fried Chicken, all of these different places started to contact Luther because they wanted him to write a jingle for their company. And he was successful almost every time, if not every time. Now, not only was Luther doing all of this work on the side, he was still singing with some of his singing members from Shades of Jade, but he was not in that group any longer. Longer. Now he really had created his own group and the group was called Luther. Although it consisted of other group members, the group name was Luther. And I do believe the group put out two albums and they were kind of successful, but they were not smash hit. So Luther was doing okay, but the light really started to shine on him when he started singing with a pop group named Change. And this was not just any old regular 80s pop group. No, this was an Italian pop group. So that kind of lets you know Know how big Luther's name was becoming behind the scenes. I mean, what? You're working with an Italian group? Like, most people's names don't even get that far behind the scenes. So he was really doing something great. But anyways, like I said, it was when Luther sang with the group Change, and he was the lead singer on their songs The Glow of Love and Searching, that Luther became a semi-star because everybody loved those songs because of Luther. His beautiful voice was perfect for Lee. And Change knew that. I mean, they knew that they were pretty successful as a group without Luther, but they also knew that, hey, this Luther guy is really bringing in some fans, bringing in some money, like we need to keep him. So they tried to get him to sing on their second album as well and they come to him, Luther, Luther, we'd like for you to sing on a second album. And Luther is like, okay, you know, cool, I'll sing on the second album. So what money we talking about? What y'all gonna pay me? Uh, there's no money, you know, slight money, just short little money. And Luther was like, you're not gonna sit up there and use my voice and you ain't paying me? So y'all can go little money on out the door. And he declined the little deal. And Luther was probably a little upset by it because I would have been, I ain't gonna lie, if my voice sounds like that and it's basically the skyrocketed some of y'all songs and y'all trying to come to me and ain't really trying to pay me, like, you trying to use me, you know what I'm saying? So he may have been feeling like that, I don't know, that's just the way I would have felt. But even if he was feeling like that it did not matter because he was about to step into his greatness and about to jumpstart his solo career and he did when he put out his first solo album called never too much and of course the title song never too much was a huge hit but that is not the only hit that was on the album honey it was probably a lot more hits but the one i am about to talk about is this house is not a home Luther Vandross completely destroyed that song in a great way. So after this, pretty much Luther was putting out hit after hit after hit. And 
we know about his career. Everybody know about Luther, child. I'm talking about Big Luther and Little Luther. So we're about to pause talking about the career right here, and we about to sprinkle some tea in it, baby. Y'all know what it is. The scandal, child. The scandal. First things first, let's get to some of the obvious stuff, child. Don't y'all know us folks out here talking about some Luther Vandross was gay? Now, it's claimed that this rumor has been out ever since he pretty much first came out. But a lot of people felt like it started when Luther dote his new home and all of the walls in his home were painted like a rose pink or something like that. If I can find the picture, I'm going to put it up there. But even if people were whispering he was gay before this picture came out, once this picture came out, even more people started whispering and questioning his sexuality. Gossip says that another reason people started whispering is because because if you look on some of Luther Vandross's album covers, probably all of them, I don't know, he just sitting up there like, Luther's lips was pursed for the gods, honey. But maybe he wanted to kiss the camera woman, I don't know, but his lips was pursed. But there's this one post I saw where someone claimed that it was no rumor at all that Luther was gay. They claimed that they saw Luther in the gay club with them. Baby, they said they used to be partying right beside Luther at a club named LaRay's and a club named The Generator. Those clubs were located in the Boys Town section of Fulton, Chicago. Now listen to this, T. Somebody out there said that even if Luther was gay, if you were a dark-skinned black male, baby, you might as well go ahead and stand on the sidelines or have multiple seats because they said Luther did not have nothing for you. But I do believe that this tea was that person's personal opinion. So I'm not sure if that's really tea, but apparently Luther gave off signs or vibes that he would not date dark-skinned men. To build up on that same gossip, there is a story out there that may confirm that person's opinion. Because there's also a rumor out there saying that Luther Vandross was actually in a relationship with an Italian guy named Larry. Now let me tell you the backstory to this. Gossip says that in 1985, Luther Vandross spotted a 15 year old boy named Jimmy Salvamini on Star Surf. And apparently this little boy could blow. He could sing so well that Luther got on the phone right then and was like, hey, I need to meet that kid. I have some songs that I have written and I think that little Jimmy can sing these songs perfectly. So I want to make him a star. I want to meet that kid. And it just so happened that the person that Luther was talking to was Larry because Larry was the elder brother and manager for Jimmy Salvamini. Now, Luther was not lying about trying to help this boy and make him a star. He actually helped Larry negotiate a contract with Electra Records for Jimmy in the amount of $250,000. And when little Jimmy signed up, he, Luther, Larry went straight to work. They got a completed album. Everybody was excited about it. As a matter of fact, they were so excited that they were like, hey, you know, we've inked this deal. We've made an album. Let's go celebrate. Let's go jump in the car and just go wherever the car takes us. Unfortunately, the car, which was Luther's convertible Mercedes, took them into the other lane on a two-lane street and they smashed into two vehicles. All three guys were hurt really, really badly. In fact, they were all rushed to the hospital. Luther and Jimmy made full recoveries, but unfortunately, Larry, the rumored boyfriend of Luther, died in that car crash. Now listen at this. At first, it is claimed that the Salvamini family were supportive of Luther. You know, they were like, oh, it was an accident. We understand, you know, Luther, we're just so thankful that you got our son a contract. We understand it was an accident. You know, we all miss Larry. Child, somebody got into their ear and told them just how much money they could get. Next thing you know, in 1986, Luther Vandross was facing vehicular manslaughter charges and a wrongful death suit. But Luther, who I'm sure if he and Larry were in a relationship, was still mourning over his boyfriend friend's death and you know he didn't want to deal with everything so he ended up pleading no contest to the charges and he also settled out of court with the Salamini family in the rumored amount of seven hundred thousand dollars in recent times the author Cola Booth claimed that Luther Vandross was gay but see the tea that she put out is a little deeper than everybody else's honey because not only did she blast Luther she also blasted Mr. Randy Jackson she basically got on a social media platform and she posted a post that says something to the effect of like, oh, I remember this night all these years back. Honey, I had a great time that night. That is the night that I ran into Luther Vandross and Randy Jackson on their date. And child, we just drank and had so much fun. Wait a minute, wait. 
You can't just say that you saw them on a date and then just keep on talking like everything is fine. The audience is like, what do you mean you saw them on a date? And then other people were like, you know, maybe you shouldn't say the word date, you know, because when people think of date, they think of romantic stuff. And maybe you should have just said something else like they got together as friends for dinner or something like that. But listen, baby, Cola wasn't playing those games. Cola let it be known that she said what she said. And she put another post up and was like, hey, by date, I mean date like a romantic, kissing, hugging type date. This is what these guys were doing. And when she said that, apparently people just went absolutely crazy, absolutely insane. People were like, what? You are telling us that Randy Jackson and Luther Vandross dated? Like what in the world? We had no idea that they were even around in the same circles or talking to each other. And of course, the word got back to Randy Jackson. And I guess Randy was like, you know, he was so upset and he couldn't believe she was saying these lies and all this kind of stuff. But honey, listen to this. If Randy Jackson thought his little say-so or his little hurt feelings was gonna calm Cola Booth down, it did not. She came out with another post and said something to the effect of, oh, you know, I'm sorry, Randy Jackson. Your feelings must be hurt just like those women that you beat on all those years. Bloop! And checkmate. Baby, she hit Randy with that kabooya. You hear me? Child, know Randy was sitting up there looking cheap and embarrassed. Baby, he wish he could disappear in that wall over there. He was so doggone embarrassed. Because I would have been. But let's go ahead into the next rumor. And that rumor says that Luther Vandross was a diva. He was nasty and he had an attitude and he was like just, um, underhanded, you know, very throw stones and hide your hand behind your back. First up are the rumors about the scandalous tour that he had with Miss Anita Baker in 1988. Now, before we get started, I want to let you know that there are two different sides to this rumor. The first side says that Luther and Anita did not get along because Anita was an absolute monster. In fact, it is claimed that there are several stories of Anita Baker having a bad time with people about her cursing people out or talking to people like they were nothing. And in this particular story, she was a hot mess because rumor says that every time she was doing her own shows, she would sing some of Luther Vandross' songs. And I'm not talking about just songs that he wrote. I'm talking about his actual songs that he sang. She would sing on her shows. And it said that Luther was cool with that. You know what I'm saying? He did not mind that. But y'all, let me tell you how messy Anita got. These folks is out here saying that even when she got on the tour with Luther, she still sang his songs in her set. She did not have enough respect or dignity to take his songs out of her lineup and still sing them even when she was on tour with him. And I'm sure that while she was doing that, Luther was backstage with all kind of Jerry Curl juice dripping. Then there's another rumor that shows how shady Anita Baker was being on this tour. Luther came to Anita and was like, hey, since we're on this tour together, we could team up sometime during the show and sing a duet together. I think our fans will really like that. And Anita was like, okay, sure. And Luther was like, okay, good. Let's sing one of Marvin and Gay and Tammy Terrell songs. And I believe the song was Ain't No Mountain High Enough, okay? And so they're practicing and rehearsing and Anita up there. I put everything on my wedding ring. It ain't no mountain high enough, baby. I made that up. But anyway, she's smiling, having a good time. They're connecting. They're looking each other in the eyes. I mean, they are really, really connecting and doing a great job at rehearsal. Luther is very excited to debut this to their audience. Baby, don't you know either the day before or the day that they were due to perform this, Anita called Luther's camp and was like, hey, you know, I don't want to do the duet thing. I'm not comfortable with it. I just don't think it's a good idea. And so she pulled out of the duet. And Luther is like, are you serious? Really? We've been doing rehearsals you claimed everything was good but Anita was not gonna do it you know she pulled out it was what it was and that was the end of it and some say the story stops right there but others say uh no ma'am the story does not stop there and it actually gets much much messier and that is because some say that after Anita told Luther I'm not comfortable with the duet I don't want to sing that she walked on that stage that night and sang that same song that they had been practicing by herself and then listen to this the tea gets even messier honey because some stories claim that after she sang the song when the audience was going crazy you know oh anita you did so well yeah we love you all that kind of stuff baby don't you know they said that anita had the nerve to raise up her hands like thank you thank you all so much thank you thank you child luther was Serious, baby. And if his Jerry Curl was dripping juice before, baby, it was dry that night. 
and I don't blame them. Now all of that I just told you was a part of the first rumor as to why the tour was such a mess behind the scenes. That's the first rumor, okay? Remember when I told you it was two versions? The second side says that it was Luther's fault as to why there was so much mess behind the scenes. Child, they said Luther was back there doing diva stuff like putting up a curtain between his camp and Anita Baker's camp because he didn't want to look at her. He felt like she was disrespectful and he just didn't have time for that. It is also said that he would make his sets a lot longer because he wanted to take away stage time from Anita. He wanted all the focus on him. Another rumor says that Luther felt like Anita was just getting way too much shine. He felt like that he was the superstar on this tour and she was getting too much shine. And that is probably true because it said that when the newspapers printed out a headline that said Anita Baker steals the show from Luther Vandross that when Luther read that he decided right then and there that there was no way that this woman was going to upstage him on this doggone tour. So all of those rumors collectively are supposedly the reason that things went awry behind the scenes on the tour with Anita Baker and Luther Vandross. I'm going to say this. This is my opinion. I feel like it was both of them. I feel like both of them had big old egos and both of them were divas and I just feel like they clashed. You know, they just, the tour was not big enough for the both of them. Now, let's get into this. Some people say that Luther Vandross did not get along with Anita Baker on that tour because Luther Vandross did not get along with women anyway. Child, they said that while all these women were screaming and crying and Luther, take me home, Luther, I want to be with you. Baby, they said when they got to Luther house, the only thing they was finna get from him was cussed out or maybe ask what size shoe they wear. Baby, they said Luther ain't had nothing for them women. And the fact that he supposedly didn't like women in general, no matter what, is possibly why he behaved the way he was rumored to behave when he was on tour with En Vogue. So it's 1993 and En Vogue has shot on the scene like a rocket in the last couple of years. You know, they have gotten some real good hits. And it is said that Luther felt like, you know, these girls are good. They have a good stage presence. I would really like for these girls to be my opening act for my next tour and in Vogue agree and they were all smiles and thank you Luther we love you so much and Luther was like you know you girls are going to go real real far and baby that is where the pleasantries ended because child as soon as the tour got started you know it was some mess. Now Gossip says that in Vogue were actually the ones to start the mess. And the ladies may not have meant to start the mess, but they did. And that is when they requested for Luther to come out on stage while they were singing their last songs instead of what he was doing. And what he was doing was letting them sing their songs and then after they were done, they would walk off stage and then the curtain would close and then Luther would come out in all his grandiosity. You know, that is how the show was going. But in Vogue was like, instead of him coming out with this grand celebration and stuff why don't he just come out on the stage while we are still on there and maybe we'll kind of sing behind him let's do it like that that'll be good for the audience but baby listen luther said y'all have us think y'all smart don't y'all y'all think i'm stupid don't it it ain't got nothing to do with what the audience would like what y'all want me to do is come out while y'all are on stage so i can kind of lift your profile and y'all also mad at me because i got a grand entrance listen don't be mad at me because i'm big with a grand entrance and y'all got to do a little Tinkerbell walk on stage without no big grand entrance. That's not my problem. And so Luther said no. And in Vogue were supposedly very disappointed by this and felt like Luther was not as supportive as they felt like he should have been and all that. But child, Luther said, y'all ain't slick. And so with En Vogue doing that, Luther started looking at them sideways and started treating them, you know, kind of sideways. Basically, he was like, okay, I'm sitting up here thinking y'all some sweet little girls and y'all doing this, but really y'all kind of shysty a little bit. But what they didn't know is Luther could get even shystier. Now, this next rumor says there was a dispute over En Vogue's wardrobe, that Luther did not want the girls wearing anything that was going to be similar to what he was wearing. And then it's also said that when folks was like, you know, what you mean, Luther? Luther or in Vogue was acting like they didn't understand. Baby, they said Luther got too petty and came and said this. Um, hi, hi, everybody, guys. It seems like there's some type of misunderstanding to what I said about the wardrobe. So let me explain it to you. If Frank Sinatra was doing a show and he was the star and I was the opener for Frank Sinatra, I would understand that he's the star. So therefore, when I went to the wardrobe rack and there's a tuxedo hanging and a sweater, if Frank wears the tuxedo, I have to wear the sweater. That is the way it works. First choice comes with status. And in this show, I am the star. Okay? 
Baby, you know, in Vogue was boiling mad. They stomp away all mad and stuff like that. But they claimed the reason that they were mad was not because they were wanting to wear the clothes that he was wearing. I mean, it's in Vogue. They're a female group. So they're not trying to wear tuxedos and suits like him. They were upset because Luther was saying that they couldn't wear any colors that he wore. And basically, he put in their contract that they were not allowed to wear red, white, blue, black. Basically, all of the primary colors. He would not allow them to wear any of those. So they felt like, you know, well, what else is there to wear? Yellow or something like that? Like, we need to be able to at least wear one primary color. But Luther was not hearing none of that. And although I see where En Vogue is coming from, honestly, while everybody is like, Luther Petty, he should have let them do this, Luther this, Luther that, uh, ain't nothing petty about it because the man put it in the contract. If En Vogue did not want to sign the contract, they should not have signed the contract. That is how business works. So I understand that they didn't like it, but you can't come back afterwards and say, hey, I don't like this because every time Luther is going to hold up the contract and be like, well, listen, baby, you might not like it, but you signed it. Is this not your signature? Whose signature is this? Is this your grandma's signature? I mean, what's going on? You signed it, didn't you? And then Vogue got to sit up there and be like, yeah, we signed it, but we don't like it. And baby, I don't give a dog on if you don't like it, you signed it. And that is pretty much the stance that Luther was taking. And listen, I just thought about this, y'all. And Vogue was probably so upset about not being able to wear them little primary colors because they wanted to wear them little red skin tight dresses from giving them something he can feel. Child Luther told them, I give you something you can feel, all right. Your lips up against my backside and your money being shot from breaking this doggone contract. You are not wearing those dresses. So now that En Vogue has not only complained about Luther and his grand entrance and also them not being able to wear the kind of colors they wanted to wear, now is when Luther get a little petty. You know what I'm saying? He get a little shysty because y'all are keeping up too much mess for his liking. And let me explain what I mean by this because the next rumor says that En Vogue began to complain again and this time they were complaining because Luther was keeping the band on stage while En Vogue was doing their set. So they was up there like shoot, yeah, shoot, about to trip and fall because the band is right there. And not only was it a semi-hazard because they could possibly trip because the band was so close to them, it also was a problem because the audience would complain that they paid their good money to see En Vogue and they they couldn't see in Vogue because from where they were sitting, the band was in the way and they felt like they did not get their money's worth. And gossip says that when in Vogue told Luther this, Luther got petty like David Ruffin, honey. Luther was out here like, what fans? What fans come to see y'all? Ain't nobody come to see y'all for real. And even if they do, it's just a little bitty bit of fans. Majority of the fans are here to see me. I'm the headliner, I'm the star. So no, I will not move the band off the stage for y'all little bitty fanfare and so y'all audience can see y'all. They'll be all right. It got even more messy and almost downright ridiculous. And this is because In Vogue supposedly overheard or may have even seen with their own eyes Luther Vandross inquire about a pair of boots at the Versace store. Now that in itself is nothing wrong with that, but child, listen to this. They claimed that Luther Vandross were asking about a woman's boot, honey. That Luther was like, hey, I like these boots, I want them. So can I get some in my side? And said the Versace lady was like, uh, these are thigh high boots, sir. So you want these thigh high boots in your size. And Luther was like, is that a problem? And honey, I guess the Versace store sent him the boots in his size. You know, I don't know, I have no idea. But what I do know is supposedly when En Vogue found out about this, there was a lot of giggling and ki 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 going on because Luther was trying to walk around looking like Patrick Starr. But Luther was like, uh, don't do me. Y'all doing all this giggling and laughing and all this kind of stuff, little talking up under your breath. How about I don't even look in y'all faces no more? How about I put up a curtain between our camps and we never eat together, we never see each other on this tour? How about that? And that's exactly what he did. Shut En Vogue out. And not only did he put the curtain up baby he made it clear that in vogue was not to come on his side of the curtain that he was not to see their faces the whole rest of the tour he ain't want nothing to do with them and in vogue was like no he did and who he think he is then they tried it because they thought luther was playing so one night on their way to the stage and i think this happened in miami but on their way to the stage they went behind luther's curtain and they claimed because that was the easiest way to get to the stage they said if you went the other way you had to go all the way around the building or something like that so supposedly 
This was the easiest route to get to the stage. Baby, don't you know they walked on his side of the curtain and on their way they passed by his dressing room and Luther looked out the door and saw one of their faces. And so in Vogue gone, <laughs> you know, giggling, run on off to the stage. When they got off the stage, they got the shock of their life, honey. Because Luther had called the police on them and said something like trespassing or something like that. Basically told the police that he told them he did not want to see their face. He told them to stay off of his side of the curtain and they disobeyed that so he feel like you know they need to face some time or something i don't know what luther had going on but it really showed in vogue that you do not play with luther now from what i saw it seems like when in vogue tells this story when they say all of these things that they try to make it seem like you know luther was just so evil so bad in fact it is rumored that they started calling him lucifer after that tour so they kind of put it like you know he was just acting like this he could have been more lenient he could have been better with us we were young but to me i don't think both sides of the story are being told because when you really think about it. In Vogue in 1993, 92, 91, whatever, they were still very young adults. So I'm pretty sure it was a lot of whispering behind Luther's back. <laughs> girl, look at his shoes, girl. Girl, no, he did not come out with them shiny pants on. Girl, you know, I'm sure it was a lot of that going on. So, you know, Luther just responded in kind, probably. I wasn't there, so I'm not sure. But I just cannot believe that Luther was just like ruthless and mean without any type of provocation. I really feel like some of the things he was provoked to do, but that's my opinion. But let's move on to another little bit of tea. And this rumor involves the subject of one of my recent videos. And that is the DeBarges. Rumor has it that Luther was on tour with the DeBarges and he could not stand the DeBarges. It was okay at first. You know what I'm saying? He felt like everything was good. But honey, they say the DeBarges got on the tour and I think they were high. And I don't know if they were missing shows and I'm not sure about that. But it's also claimed that they trashed their dressing room. They were, uh, well, I don't know if they were stealing stuff out of the vending machine. That might be another rumor. But it was like they were doing a lot of stuff and loud and just crazy or something. And Luther did not like that. You know, he felt like they were not professional. He felt like they had too much going on. So he was pretty upset with them on that tour. But it's also claimed that he dared not say it in their face. Gossip says them debarges will knock you out, baby. I didn't know that when I did that video. They are out here saying that the DeBarges were some thugs, child. Somebody said that Jermaine Jackson had put out there that them DeBarges will knock you out. They was ghetto or something. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, the little light-skinned DeBarge folks was ghetto or hood or something, child. I don't know how to explain it. All I know is it is said that those light-skinned DeBarges will really knock you out if you try them. Now, that tea is kind of funny about the DeBarges, but now it's finna get a little messy, a little deep. I'm not going to repeat the details of the rumor like I did in the DeBarge video, but I am going to say that one of those rumors that I told you in the DeBarge video about Bobby and James being caught in a room or something like that, it is claimed that that was not a Switch member that caught them. Somebody sent me a message and said, hey, Ashley, you got this wrong. That was not a Switch member that caught them. It was Luther Vandross. So that's what I'm saying. A lot of y'all be like, why, Ashley? Why should we have to check what you say? Why can't we take what you say as fact? Because I don't know and because they're all rumors, just like how that rumor was switched up. One rumor is out saying it was a switch bandmate that caught them, but then here goes a whole nother rumor saying it was Luther Vandross that caught them. And even though the basis of the rumor is the same, the details of Luther Vandross catching them gives a whole different insight into what might have happened afterwards which by the way i have no idea what happened afterwards maybe the blur, 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 that's all folks maybe that happened again i don't know but anyways back to some of luther vandross's feuds it's also said that he got into a feud with aretha franklin supposedly he had written a song that he wanted her to sing and while they were recording for it aretha had sang it her way and you know was ready to leave the studio and luther was like oh uh, no you've not gonna leave nowhere you didn't sing this the way it should be sang. And Aretha got an attitude because supposedly Aretha was known as One Take Aretha, meaning she was so good she could get the song done right the very first time. But Luther went on ahead and knocked that little crown off her head and was like, hey, I don't know what one take you supposed to be, but tonight you finna be two, three, four takes because you didn't sing this the right way. And some gossip says that Aretha was like, well, look, hey, baby, you fresh out of luck sitting up there waiting on me to record it again because I'm not doing it. And was trying to be out her way out the door. And Luther came back and was like, oh, Miss Ma'am, Madam Queen. 
you are out of luck because if you think you finna sing the song that I wrote and ain't gonna sing it the way you supposed to sing it, baby, you won't be singing this song at all. I will take this song and give it to somebody else to sing it the right way. And that's when Miss Aretha came on in there, child, put a little crown back on and was humble and was like, now what do you need me to do? And sang the song the way he wanted her to sing it. Oh, and I forgot to tell y'all this rumor at the very beginning. What comment said that Luther Vandross almost failed his sophomore or junior year, one of the years in high school, because he was too toe up about the Supremes. Honey, they said when the Supremes broke up, Luther Vandross was like crying every day. He was very depressed. He just could not stand it. He needed the Supremes to be together. Now this next rumor says that Luther Vandross led a very, very sad and depressed life. That behind the scenes, Luther was very, very lonely. And it said it was like that because he loved very, very hard and he latched onto his lovers with everything he got. And he could not be with these men. Now, some people say it's because a lot of these men were married men. That's what some people say. Then other people say that they just did not look at Luther the same way. They just didn't look at him like that. I mean, they liked him. You know, they were cool. But they didn't want to spend the rest of their life with him. And so apparently Luther could rarely find a man or any mate to share his dreams with. And some people say that his yo-yo dieting, the reason he became, you know, big and then got skinny, then got big again, they claimed that it was a result of his heartbreak of the fact that he longed to have a partner. But I don't really think that part is true because I read that Luther Vandross was on a yo-yo diet because he was fighting diabetes and hypertension. Now I do know from my research and just reading comments and reading posts from the general public that it seems like some people are sympathetic to Luther. You know, they feel like, oh, man, I wish he could have just came out and been who he wanted to be. I feel so bad. And then other people, and most of these people that I read these comments basically said they were homosexual themselves, felt like, uh, I ain't got no sympathy for him. He should have just came out and lived out and proud. They were comparing him to Sylvester. They were like, you know, Sylvester did it. He was out and proud. Nobody shut him in the corner. So if Luther was depressed, that's on him. He should have just came out instead of trying to please other people. But to me, that's, that's too much of a harshness to that because Sylvester was just that way from the get. You know what I'm saying? From the gate, he was that way. He was flamboyant. You know, he was homosexual. He was out and proud. And that's what his music reflected. Luther, it's kind of hard for him to come back after he put out his early hits and then just come back and be like, hey, you know, I'm homosexual. I do feel like that would have been career suicide for him. And those people who have the Sylvester argument said that, you know, oh, well, Sylvester came out. He was good. His music career did not suffer because of it. But once again, that's because Sylvester Sylvester came out being like that. Luther did not come out being like that. So it was just kind of hard for him at any point in his career to me to come out and say that he was a homosexual without his career falling to the gutter. You know, especially since the women were his biggest audience. Whatever the case about Luther Vandross, it is clear that he was a very, very private man. There was not much scandalous tea info out about him. You know, I don't even know if he talked to people and told people his gossip. If he did, he had some very, very loyal friends with a closed mouth. Nobody really put his business out. That's even if he talked to anybody. Maybe he didn't. Now, people do say that one person put his business out there, and that was Miss Patty LaBelle. It is rumored that after he passed away, Patty LaBelle confirmed that he was indeed a gay man. And when she did this, some people got angry and was like, you know, that was not your place to tell. He wouldn't have wanted you to say anything. You're not a good friend to him. You know, I don't know. I don't know if she was wrong or right when she said what she said. I have no idea because I don't know the insides of their relationship. You know, maybe he told her that after I pass away, it's cool to say what you want to say. I don't know, so I don't have any judgments or opinions on that. Regardless if the man was gay or straight, he was absolutely a superstar. And if I don't know anything else, I do know that he shined his entire career when he first stepped on the stage. And then on April the 16th, 2003, when Luther Vandross was 50, two years old he suffered from a stroke and although Luther was still able to talk and communicate after the stroke his life would never be the same he never really fully got over the symptoms of the stroke and on July 1st 2005 at the age of 54 he actually ended up passing away due to a heart attack it is said that all of his sisters and brothers had already predeceased him but his mother was still alive and well and she actually died in 2008 and this is the end of the old Hollywood scandal for Mr. Luther Vandross I love you guys so much go ahead and like like and subscribe and I will be out with another video soon. Bye guys.
Just as crazy as me. Bye, y'all. I'll see y'all next video. Lord have mercy.